The purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about supporting details, um, the different types of supporting details that you will find in writing, the different types of supporting details that you will write for your paragraphs, um, the difference between major and minor details, which can kind of also help to talk about how to stay on topic while you're writing, if you've ever felt like you've gone off on a tangent or if that's sort of your MO in writing. Um, thinking about major and minor details can help you kind of figure out whether you're actually doing that or not. Um, and then we'll look at a quick example. So this video should not be more than 15 minutes. Um, and of course, at the end, if you have any questions, just let me know. So there's types of supporting details. And depending on how you write will kind of depend on what types of supporting details you need depending on the mode of writing that you are using will depend on the supporting details that you need. Um, there's reasons, and I think of this as like logical reasoning. You know, if you're really trying to work out an argument on something, if you're trying to get your reader to see your perspective or understand, then you're going to need a, to use a lot of logical reasoning. You'll probably need to use logical reasoning paired with some kind of research, whether that's facts and statistics or theory. Um, logical reasoning is really at the heart of writing, making your reader understand and make sense of your ideas. Of course, examples work really, really well as supporting details as well. If you're going to make a claim about something, whether that's an argumentative claim, um, and I would I would like to argue that everything in some way is argumentative. Um, but no matter what you're talking about, you can always give examples. If you're talking about life or um, if you are defining something or you're comparing and contrasting, examples can be a really, really, really great way to support your ideas. Um, and I think that, you know, you can give like with a essays that you're working on currently. You can give personal examples, you can give examples of other people, you can even give hypothetical examples if those fit within the context of your writing um, and you are good at writing hypothetical examples. I think they can be a little bit tricky, but examples function really, re really well to kind of illustrate the ideas that you are presenting or almost like make them a little more concrete. Um, of course, facts and statistics work really well if you are um, providing any kind of argument that requires research or even requires some kind of convincing. If you have any numerical content to back up these ideas, then facts and statistics are, are probably going to be helpful. Um, when you are talking about numbers, when you're talking about facts and statistics, it's really important to give context to those facts and statistics. If you say something like, um, there are, you know, 100 penguins left in the world, um, and the, the rate of penguin life is decreasing, it's important to give context in that how many penguins were there 20 years ago or 40 years ago? Were there thousands of penguins? Were there 150 penguins? Because that does make a difference and it helps your reader see the difference. Um, of course, if you're writing any kind of process analysis, maybe even walking through how definitions have changed, then supporting details might be the different steps to take or steps within a process. Um, any kind of, I think evidence really covers everything, right? Evidence is the supporting detail for the topic sentence, but um, you could think of this as scientific evidence, you could think of this as research-based evidence, you could think of this as really anything that is going to also support your topic sentence. And then of course there's research which would require a citation, um, quotes, paraphrases, and summaries. If these come from other people's ideas, then you do need to have a citation. Um, research, of course, can really be any of the things that I've already talked about. It can be examples or facts, statistics, other evidence. Um, really just depends on the type of research that you're doing. So supporting details help you to grow your paragraphs. If you feel like you are short, sweet, and to the point, you're probably not giving me enough supporting details. Details are good. Saying something and then illustrating it and then paraphrasing the way someone else has said it might sound like you're writing in circles, but you're actually just developing your ideas. And this is something that I tell a lot of my students about. You know, they, there's a, a, a fear, I think, that 
um, as a student, if you're not confident in your own writing, you might feel like you are saying the same thing over and over in a new way, and maybe there's something wrong with that or repetitive, and of course, um, there could be, but for the most part, I get the feeling that you're just not sure if you're doing it right, and actually you are. You're just developing and supporting your ideas. As you're thinking about supporting details, I want you to be thinking about major versus minor details. So major details are the primary points that are going to help you support your topic sentence. Of course, you're, you can think of it like this. You have an entire essay and that has a thesis statement. And each one of those body paragraphs is supporting that thesis statement. Those would be like major details for your thesis. And all of those topic sentences have details below them, and those would be like minor details for your thesis statement. So what happens when we just approach it at the paragraph level? Well, your topic sentence is the main idea of the whole entire paragraph, and then you have the different ways in which you're going to support your topic sentence. So you might find that a paragraph has a couple of major points. And below each one of those points, there are additional details, the finer points, that support those major points. So you have topic sentence, major detail, and then below the major details, minor detail. You might have another major detail and some more minor details. I find that most of my students who write paragraphs that are too short or are underdeveloped are hitting those topic sentence and major details but are not providing any kind of minor details to support the major details. Details, 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 details are so important. Um, so essentially major details are the primary points that support the main idea or the topic sentence of the paragraph and the minor details expand upon the major details. So you could think of it almost like as a balloon. The balloon itself is your major detail and as you pack in more minor details the balloon expands just like your paragraph and it becomes full and well developed. Of course a balloon can always pop. You can have way too many details within a paragraph but I'm not really concerned for y'all's writing. I don't think that you're going to, with the assignments you're looking at, the things you're kind of contemplating writing on, um, I don't, I'm not afraid of you having too many details. If you do, we'll address it, but I don't think that you will. Okay. Um, one of the things, and this kind of takes me back to the point I said at the beginning, is relevance. So, all of your major details should support your topic sentence, and all of your minor details should, should support the information in the major detail. If you have any detail, whether it's major or minor, that is not working to support the topic sentence, that's not working to support, if it's a minor detail, that major detail, something that just seems out of place, or as I would say off topic, that is probably something you would say, okay, I'm going off on a tangent here. This is unrelated. Um, maybe I can bring this up in a follow-up paragraph on a new topic, but uh, what you want to have visually is your topic sentence. And your topic sentence should be supported by major details. And then your major details should be supported by minor details. So if you are a visual person, then this highlighting might be able to help you. This, the reason I've highlighted here too is to coordinate with what you will see in our example. Um, one of the things I like to do is just kind of really confirm and make sure that everybody understands this difference between major and minor details. Now, our topic sentence here, highlighted in green, if you can see this, <clears throat> says, studies reveal that people's first names can have an influence on them. There are two major details that are working to support this statement. The first major detail, and both of these are highlighted in yellow, says, some names reflect on people in a positive way. The second major detail says, however, other names can have a negative impact. Then if I just moved on to my concluding sentence, Knowing this, it is important to consider how names affect perception. If I just 
stated topic sentence, two major details, and a concluding sentence, I would have a four-sentence paragraph. This paragraph would be too short, it would be underdeveloped, and it would not be effective. So that's where these minor details come into play. Minor details that are working to support the first major detail, which is about how people's names reflect in a positive way, are, for example, one survey showed that American men consider, oh, sorry, I have a typo, y'all, consider the name Susan to be very sexy. And participants in a British study thought Tony to be the name of someone very friendly. Okay, so here we have some examples as minor supporting details. Then again, moving on to the major, second major detail. However, other names can have a negative impact. Now we have um, some kind of, well, I'm sure all of this really counts as research, um, but we're looking at information found within a study. In one study, for instance, use that as a, like an exemplification or an example or illustrative transition. In one study, teachers gave lower grades to essays supposedly written by boys named Hubert and Elmer than to the very same essay when they credited it to boys with more popular names. Another study found girls with unpopular names did worse on IQ and achievement tests than girls with more appealing names. Again, ending on the concluding sentence, knowing this is an important, it is important to consider how names affect perception. So we have a bunch of examples here to support the major details. Um, and so this is kind of, I think a good way to help you, um, one, understand the structure of a paragraph beyond just topic sentence, supporting details, concluding sentence. Here we can look at when you're presenting your supporting details, you should say, what are my major details, what are my minor details? And you can always refer back to this small um, outline. Now, if anyone has any questions, please let me know. Um, I think that for the most part, you all probably understand the concept of supporting details. Maybe you haven't really considered the difference between major and minor or how paragraphs should be structured. Um, but if you have questions, please let me know. I'm going to ultimately sum up and say you're familiar with this, even if you're not sure that you are.